Hello and welcome to this second in a series of three videos where we're looking at the Wavetable synth Flux which is included with Halion Sonic and Halion Sonic SE. So in a previous video we saw that Wavetables are the way that this generates its sound. So rather than using traditional oscillators which you get in a subtractive synth, it uses Wavetables which allow much more complicated sounds to be created without any use for filters. This makes them much more useful for creating textured, interesting sounds. But the main interest from Wavetable synths, in my opinion, is that they can evolve over time. So you can get really complicated sounds that be very difficult, if not impossible, to create with most standard subtractive synths. But to do that, you need to use modulation. If you're not sure what that term means, really in this context, it just means one signal that changes another. So you can have things controlling different parts of the synths. In this case, we're going to be using LFOs and envelopes to control elements of the synth, typically the position in the wavetable, which is how we get those changing, evolving sounds. But as you see, there'll be a few other things to it. So without further ado, let's get into it by looking at the basic setup and how we're going to move from that to something much more interesting. So here we are in Cubase, and as you can see, I've got the same setup as before. So Halion Sonic is on the left, Halion Sonic SE makes a little difference for this. And on the right, we've got Supervision set up with a Spectrum Analyzer at the top and an oscilloscope at the bottom. And as you can see, when I play a note, that's what we get. In terms of Flux's setup, just got one oscillator turned on at the moment, which is set to Comb Square 01, positions all the way over to the left. So we're just effectively just getting a square wave, which you've probably already seen. And the filter here. In fact, I'm just going to turn that all the way up so we get just get pretty much our waveform with not a lot else happening. Now let's look at the modulation page. The principle of this is reasonably simple. So we have a source on the left hand side and that affects our destination by the depth amount here. So if you're not familiar with this, hopefully this will get you through that. So we're going to start off by using envelope three. And in the case of envelope three, it's a bipolar one. So this is a little more complicated than a standard one. So if you look on a standard ADSR, we just get attack time, decay time, release time, and then the sustain level. But on envelope three here, it's a little more complicated because we can pick the starting point for the attack time and the end point for the attack time. So these are levels. So level zero goes to level one over the attack time. We've got the decay time, which leads down to the sustain level. So effectively, this is, well, sort of L two although weirdly they've called that l4 but i'm not entirely sure why so sustain is nearly always a level and then we've got the release time which then goes back to here so at the moment because this is set to zero zero and minus 100 this would be a bit weird so what i'm going to do is set this to be 100 because that's what a normal envelope would do and i'm going to set this to be 100 as well so then that's like having these two set up here so this will behave a little more normally. With that set up, we're going to pick this as our source. The first thing we do is turn this on, and then this gets enabled. So we're going to pick envelope three as our source. Our destination, to make this pretty obvious what's going on, we've got all these options here, but we're not going to play around with the wavetables just yet. This is just, you know, a first dip into the water. So we're just going to use pitch, which is the global pitch for all of our oscillators. So at the moment, it does nothing, and you can hear when I play the note, it's still that square wave. Now, if I pick this here, then this envelope is going to start affecting the pitch. So let's just set this to 12. Nice octave. And we can see this is working because that's going like that. And we heard the release time at the end, but it works instantly because this attack time is zero. It goes straight to 12. If I put this up, it's so quick, we don't really hear it. If I put it up in the top half, so now we can hear that that envelope is working. So now we're getting sort of, you know, 80s and... So on video game kind of sounds. You know, I've just done something sad in a video game. If this is new to you, I would suggest just playing around with this for a while because pitch is really easy to 
for you to understand. You don't have to think, oh, what's happening with the waveform, etc. You can hear what's happening with the pitch straight away. So just play around with the controls of envelope three and really get the hang of it because a lot of this, once you get the basics and you understand what you're doing and you're not just randomly turning knobs with the expectation of the sound getting better, that will really be the basis of real understanding and being able to program this from scratch and realize a sound that you can hear in your head from a synthesizer. So spend some time here just getting familiar with it because, as I say, hearing the pitch is instantly understandable what's going on. So you can play around with the depth, you can play around with the different parts of the envelope and really understand how this bipolar uh, envelope generator works because it's a little more complicated than your standard ADSR, which you get in most synths. But because it's more complicated, it also gives you more power. So it's worth spending a bit of time playing around with it. Right, so with that out of the way, let's look at an LFO, because again, you'll hear that really clearly. So we're gonna switch to the LFO page, and here you can see this is set up. Now, initially, this will probably not be in sync mode, so I'm gonna turn that back and put that to something remotely sane and then pick LFO A as our source. And when I play now, we can hear that changing. It's really clear what's going on. And if we speed this up, again, it's the, you've won something in family fortunes kind of thing. If you're American or if you're from anywhere else in the world, you probably have no idea what family fortunes is. Uh, lucky you. Anyway. The LFOs are fairly flexible, so you can see we've got these different waveforms. So all the standard kind of things, plus sample and hold, which is a bit random. Uh, 1970s Doctor Who springs to mind. And we've got a different edition of 1970s Doctor Who. Um, the Pulse one, we've got the ratio between up and down. So you can hear as you play around with that. That's, you know, again, worthwhile. To just to spend a bit of time with. So again, if you're not sure about how LFOs work or what the different modes are doing and the different controls which are available to you, spend some time here just in with pitch because just like with the envelope, being able to hear it straight away without having to take a second step of analysing what's going on will mean you'll be much more familiar and then later on in your modulation journey, you'll be able to just do things without having to think, oh, what, what does the LFO do? So, you know, if you need to spend some time here, that's fine. Because once you understand this, you'll understand it everywhere and LFOs will no longer be a mystery to you in any way, shape or form. Now, there's one thing to note here, which may or may not affect you. If you turn sync mode on, depending on which way the wind's blowing, and certainly I found this to be the case on the PC, but I haven't found it so much on the Mac. In fact, I think it only happened once, is if you put it into sync mode... Um, you may find that the LFO kind of stops working. Certainly on my PC on Cubase 11.0.10, that happens. So if that does happen, the LFO seems to stop working, but you want it to work in sync mode, change from beat to first, and then you should be in business, and then it will start working normally. But say, I've experienced this on the PC. I don't think I've seen it on the Mac, or maybe it's only happened once or twice, but it's not happening now. But if you get stuck when you put it into sync mode, just change that over. And notice that you've got a wide range from 64th notes where you'll see this is just going absolutely flat out all the way up to 64 beats, which is uh, 16 bars. So you can have a really, really slow LFO if you need it. So this is nice that you've got all these musical divisions. Yes, there isn't, you know, weird things where you've got multipliers so you could have um, three bars, etc., that kind of thing. But it's nice to have a, a decent range rather than it just going up to basically a bar and then finishing. So with that in mind, let's move on and look at it actually modulating our wavetable. So I'm just going to slow this down to something a little bit more sane, and we're going to change our destination from pitch to wavetable one position. And as soon as we play, we can hear something interesting is happening. And if we go and look, we can see it's as if we're grabbing the position control and moving it, but it doesn't quite seem like a sine wave. We're certainly getting something happening, but the reason it doesn't seem like a sine wave is because we're in bipolar mode. So bipolar mode can be useful for LFOs, but if you want it to behave in the, in quotes, normal manner, take it off bipolar mode. And now we're getting that full range all the time 
rather than it, it bottoming out and not working at certain parts. So we can slow this down. You can hear that working there and obviously you could play around with this ad infinitum. So this is nice. We can change this depth. So if we wanted to make it more severe and go all the way through the wavetable, that's going all the way to the end now. So you've got a, a lot you can do just with that. And if you wanted to set this up to control wavetable two, you could do that. We will look at that a bit later on. If you're going to do this for more than one thing and particularly more than one destination, it can be useful to use the bus system. So this is just a way of mixing signals together and then treating them as just one source. So this can be really useful if, let's say, you wanted to put LFO and envelope onto wavetable one and wavetable two, but then maybe also alter some other element of it as well. If you're going to start creating complicated modulations from multiple sources, then the buses are the way to go. So let's look at how that works. So let's get started with this. So we're going to take that out and pick bus one as our source. So we're going to send some signals to bus one, which will then be received by wavetable one. So I'm going to turn on slots three and four. And in slot three, I'm going to pick LFO A. And in slot four, I'm going to pick envelope three. And I'm going to say we want, let's say, about that much. And oh, let's go for that. Now, these are then both going to get sent to bus one. and these will now work so we will hear the effect of the envelope so that time of it ramping up and then dropping down to there and also the lfo as well so when i play a note we can hear we're getting the envelope as well as that working on there and we can make that even more clear by turning that up so And we can change their ratio. So let's say we just want a bit of envelope three, but mostly to be LFO A. So I can turn that up and this one down. And it's just going to change a little bit over time. Whereas if I want loads of envelope three and only a bit of LFO. Then that's what's happening. So we've got the mixture between the two. I'm mostly going to go envelope three. And we're going to change this time. So this decay time is a bit longer and the sustain goes down to zero. So this is going to take some time to rise up and some to drop down. And then the LFO will start being heard a little more clearly. Let's make this a little bit quicker so we hear it more clearly. We probably want a little bit more of that. Now, when we go back here, we can see that what's happening is because this is minus 100, this is overwhelming it. So actually, we want this to be down at zero, and then that will no longer kill that off. So this is now acting much more like a standard envelope. And once it's over, we're just getting the effect of LFO A. So that just keeps that going a little bit. Now that's fine, but now we want to do something to Wavetable 2. So let's bring Wavetable 2 in and then look at that working. So now we're going to turn Oscillator 2 on and we can see this is set up here. I'm going to take that off multi for the moment so we don't muddy the waters and turn on slot number 2. Again, its source is bus 1 and we're going to pick Wavetable 2 position. And this time, I'm going to go the other way. So I'm going to make this one go minus 100. 
we're going to go back to this one here and put it all the way over to 100. So it's going to start out here and effectively wind that backwards. So now... So we've got these two things happening at the same time. So as you hear that, you can hear it's quite a big change that's happening. Now, one of the ways to decrease this is to use multi-mode. So when you turn on multi, you can effectively have multiple wavetables going at the same time. And depending on the way you set the controls, the changes which are happening are less severe because you can have multiple wavetables, but where some of them aren't being changed, depending on how you end up with your multi-controls. So. If you have the multi-spread turned up too much, you won't hear the effect of the modulation because the wavetable will either be one end or the other because of the way the spread has worked out and the modulation control on it. So sometimes you need to turn those controls down a little bit to get it working properly. Let's have a look at those two things in action. So here we are. So we're going to turn multi on on number one. In fact, I'm going to turn off oscillator two just for the moment. And if we go to the multi page, we can see the spread is turned all the way up. So as we see this moving, you can, uh, while we're hearing that multi spread, a lot of it is already too far. So if we turn this down, we can see we're getting a change here. And you get much more of a change of the waveform because we're not all the way one way or another. Whereas with that spread turned all the way up, you can see one of these is barely changing from the square wave. Whereas with that down at about 55, we're getting a more evolving sound because of that. Now let's turn on oscillator two, put that into multi-mode two. And again, we've got the spread turned up maybe too much. So let's turn that down. And now we can see we've got those changing quite a lot. If I play an octave lower, We've got that sound changing over a reasonable range. We can slow this LFO down because now we're really hearing the effect, so we want to make it more subtle. And maybe we can bring the sub in. So as you can see, with just that simple setup, there are many options. And as soon as you bring in an extra control, such as multi, you've got more controls that you can play with. And that means there are proportionally a, a huge number more. I'm not going to say exponential because I'm sure somebody would challenge me on my pretty poor maths. But there's definitely many more options to explore, particularly if you start playing around with different wavetables and so on. But in the next section, we're going to look at how you can modify this potentially in real time using the modifier column. So you may have noticed that there is the modifier column, which has been untouched so far. Now, this allows you to control how much of this, the source, gets to the destination. So I'm going to choose to do it here. So we're going to choose from the options here and we're going to pick modulation wheel because I've got that set up on my controller keyboard. So the modulation wheel, if we turn this on, in fact, I'm going to turn off these other two so we really hear the effect and I'm even going to turn multi off. If the modulation wheel is down as it is at the moment, then we will get no effect so lfoa and envelope three are not doing anything because this is stopping them because it's set to zero now if we bring this up i can do that on my control here so now we've got 50 percent, and we get some of that effect coming through but not all of it if we put it up to 100 percent, you can hear we're going much further across those wave tables so that allows you to control things in real time. So you can set up the modulation wheel, et cetera, and then manipulate that in real time as you're playing. That will get recorded, et cetera, and change the sound. But it's not just for real time control. You can also use other controls within the system to control how much of that's happening. So we're going to look at a simple example of that next. So instead of using the modulation wheel here, we are going to pick LFOB and I'm going to do it in a fairly simple way so you can see how this works, but the, the possibilities are almost limitless. So we're going to turn this to pulse 
set the shape to 50 so it's half on and half off and now what you'll hear is when lfo b is on then this will get through and it will work and when lfo b is off it won't so i'm going to take that off of by mode so this is just going to be on and off and set it well let's leave it at just a bit lower than that and you'll hear it will work so we're getting this effect where we're getting the modulation and then we're not if i speed this up So while that's just a simple example of one modulation source then controlling another one via the modifier column, you can imagine there are plenty of other ways you could do this. So for instance, if we weren't using envelope three, you could then make use of envelope three to control that. So that changes over time, etc. This is one of the areas actually where I found with this, I probably want another envelope, but then I'm being greedy and you think, well, if you had one more, you'd probably want another one as well. But there is another thing you can do, and that is that we can actually repurpose parts of the synth that maybe we're not using to new purposes. And that's what we're going to look at next. So one thing which is useful here is if you are not using the filter envelope, because this is what it's called, it's called the filter envelope here, and it's set to be controlling the filter. If you're not using this control, or even if you are, depending on your uses, um, you can use the filter envelope, as indeed you can the amp envelope, but you can use the filter envelope to do something else. Now, the amp envelope is always going to be working, changing the volume, so you may not get enough control by using this. But with the filter envelope, if you're not using it for the filter, you can use it for something else. So let's do exactly that now. So what we're going to do is turn on this slot here, and then we're going to pick filter envelope as our source. And then we're going to send the filter envelope to something else. So I'm going to use it for distortion. So this is going to add just a little instance of distortion at the beginning. So we're going to have a little bit of attack time, reasonable decay time, and then it's going to come down to zero. So let's pick distortion as the option here. So what this is hopefully going to do, once we get the settings right, we're going to just get a little bit of crunch of distortion at the very beginning. In fact, I'm just going to turn off. So with those turned off, now we're going to put the depth up. So I'm going to have depth of, well, let's try 100. So that's taking too long to fade away. and We're fading down to zero. So the idea is this is just going to turn the distortion control up momentarily. here we're just getting that bit of attack whereas if I turn that off we're not getting that little pop so often it's useful to a b these things by turning the mod slot on and off and there you can hear we're just getting a little hit of distortion maybe a little too much at the beginning of the sound whereas we're not getting it otherwise so with a bit of tweaking maybe it needs to be a quick a bit quicker Yeah. So it's important to remember that you can use the filter envelope for something else if you're not using it. And if the settings on it are what you want, you can use it for something else anyway, but it will just be that the envelope times are the same for the filter and whatever else you're sending it to. So the filter envelope control, which is envelope amount, in this case, at the bottom left of the filter, is effectively just another modulation slot, which is happening behind the scenes, but it's hardwired into that. But Fortunately, they've given us the option to use the filter envelope elsewhere, and we can make use of that. So finally, let's just turn multi back on on oscillator one, turn oscillator two back on and put that in multi mode and bring the sub back in as well. And you can hear from this with just that playing around and just those five modulation options. We've got a reasonably interesting sound, which 
didn't take too long to program had we just gone in and got on with that. And there's plenty more you can do. Obviously, we could make this more playable with some things such as note on velocity. So by playing around with the velocity here, the keyboard I'm using isn't great at picking up velocity, but we can make it a dynamic playable sound, which you could spend some time creating a real performance for. So there you have it, a reasonably in-depth look at Halion Sonic Flux's modulation system. So you've seen how the wide range of sources can control a wide range of destinations and change almost any aspect of how sound is created and how you can use the modifiers column to alter that in real time with things like modulation wheel, pitch bend, note velocity, etc. You can create big dynamic sounds that you can play in a real time performance and control almost any aspect of it. Wavetable synths are great, but without modulation, they're not really getting their full potential. So you want those big evolving sounds which change over time. And with this, you can do that, but it's really important that you understand the basics such as LFOs and envelope generators. And by going back to that step where we had the pitch being altered by those, if you're not sure, you can just experiment with that and really get your head around it and really learn it so you know it really well. And then it's the foundation on which you can build all of those complicated modulation setups where you're using all 16 slots, because bear in mind, we only used, I think, six at most, and there's 16 available. So you can do some really complicated things and have sounds that are changing in ways that we haven't even gone anywhere near exploring because there's not enough time. In the next video, we're going to take a look at the arpeggiator section, which is going to take it to the next level because it's not just a simple arpeggiator, and that's why it's got its own video. But for the time being, I hope you found this video useful. And if you have, please consider liking and subscribing as it really helps the channel out. And we'll see you again soon for more Music Tech Tuition.